Amen. I want to look at how we can go through quickly as we teach over 200, over 250 errors in the church. Uh, my name is supposed to be Daniel. You are watching me uh, right now in the heaven and earth program. Uh, by the grace of God, we shall be starting errors in the church. Uh, the error that Jesus Christ told me that is affecting the church and has been sending people to hell. Uh, God himself is the one who gave me this error and asked me to be teaching it to all the Christians all over the world. If you are a child of God and you sincerely wanted to make it to heaven, you need to listen to this error. It's a school. In, uh, the error in the church is being carried by a school called School of Heaven. School of Heaven. Uh, we have the equator in Nigeria. If you want the errors, you can contact me on plus 234-813-896-6287. That is my WhatsApp number. You can contact me if you want to error. But right now, this is online schooling. For those people who are online and you wanted to join the school, uh, you can be you can join me both on Zoom and on the on YouTube. But it will be more beautiful if you can also sign up and join on Zoom, because we are going to be issuing certificate at the end of the of the school, and we are going to be issuing to partnership uh, form that can also warrant you and give you our uh, grace to also teach others. There are other documents that School of Heaven is going to offer by the special grace of, of God, and they are legitimate uh, or, uh, uh, certificate because School of Heaven is registered under the government. And we want to look at uh, how we can reach the church and reach the world all over the world with the message, with the, with the right message error in the church, to correct the church from different error that is going on there. I pray the Lord help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, my name is Apostle Peter Daniel. As we start the first day, error in the church. Today we make it the first days. We are going to start it in online. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, by the grace of God, we are going to be talking on the, the first error that is going on in the church. Uh, match making marriage in the church. It is a pity and it's a serious uh, pain that the church has so much ridiculed themselves and uh, bring themselves and into a strategic uh, alignment that the devil is using against the people by submitting to the lordship of Satan in sense of uh, bringing a brother and a sister and matchmaking them outside God's way. This is a serious and satanic uh, method that the church is doing and this can actually cause a serious damage into uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, many pastors have made these errors. There are some, even some pastors that their own work is to much make a brother and a sister. It's totally against the principle of God. No man has the right to much make anyone. Because the issue of marriage is a deep thing that no man should just think that uh, uh, it's a, it can evolve. Marriage is not something you can evolve. It's something you should be very careful about. Because if you involve a marriage in a wrong standard way, it will lead you to a serious problem. Let me tell you something. If a man or a woman marry wrongly, there is a 90% of or 95% of her life that such person will not make it to heaven again. Because marriage is one of the principles and so much for, uh, uh, one of the criteria to make people to enter heaven. The reason is this. I'm going to explain it to details. If matchmaking is one of the things I'm just going to say today, uh, it's okay for me. 
But I want to make sure that you understand what we are talking about today. Because if you don't understand, you might not understand what I'm saying. The reason I said that if you make it wrong in marriage, you can't make it to heaven again. Ah, uh, it's not that it is so, so, so total that you might, come, might, might not make it to heaven. But out of 100%, there is a chances, over 90% chances that heaven has lost in that person's hand. The reason is because before you come to this world, there is an arrangement in heaven that you are going to have an help meet. Or there is an arrangement in heaven that you are going to be a help meet of somebody. Now, if you eventually did not meet the person who you're supposed to be the help meet of, and you eventually go and marry wrongly. Now, let me say, over 98% plan of God will be destroyed at a plan. Because now, when you are coming to the world, there are some pastors that say that uh, God did not have any particular person for us to marry. It's a lie. They are a particular person who God has assigned you to marry. And if you don't marry the person, you are in trouble. Now, along the way, there can be a substitution. There can, there can be a substitution along the way. Now, probably if the person die along the way, or if the person marry first and marry wrongly, and you feel like, Lord, what am I going to do? God can, can, can uh, take away that grace or take away that destiny and align it with somebody else and uh, know how to match make both of you by, by himself. But for you not to marry who God wants you to marry, that's the problem we're talking about now. It's a big, big, big problem. Now, when you have husband, you have to know, one of the things you have to examine is that, is your husband the one God wants you to marry? If he's not the one God wants you to marry, then you are in trouble. You are in trouble. There is a lot of work for you to do. We are not, we are not yet to explain about the work. Let's just go straight to the point. Now, what is marriage? If you look at uh, Genesis very well, Genesis happens to be the first place where marriage is conducted by God. By bringing the woman to the man. One of the things you have to see is this, is that when God wanted to bring the woman, one, he made the man to sleep. The man go into a deep sleeping that he didn't know when God is doing it. That's one. Then immediately when the woman, the man wake up and God presented the woman to her and said, this is your wife. This will be your wife. There is a kind of spiritual detection that the man detect immediately. And what are the detection is that he said, wow, this is a woman. This shall be called a woman. Is my bone, is the bone of my bone and the flesh after my flesh. Now, what is this trying to say is that he could detect the rib that was removed inside him to her. He could detect the purpose of his life inside that woman. Now, he could know because there is a spiritual evidence and confirmation that such a person has. That's why somebody was asking me one day, he said, how can I know this person is my wife or this person is my husband? You will know. There is going to be a confirmation. Now, there are some things you ate. When your husband, your real husband is with you, the one God has signed for you, that thing you ate, he will not be doing it. Even though he do it one time, and you say you ate it, he will stop it from, from them. There is a kind of understandable character that is already been aligned into that man, that has been established. Is because that character was established because of you. Why your own character too was being established because of him. There are people that their nature is stubbornness. So God will also establish stubbornness into the wife. That stubbornness is not going to resort to fight. It's going to resort to their understanding. Let's for example, for example now. Maybe the husband is always stubborn in taking decisions. If you want to do something, it will, it will, nobody can convince him. God, will, God, if the way God created him is that you have to use stubbornness to also bring him into line, to alignment. God is going to also give him the wife who is going to have a little bit stubbornness. It, it, that, the way the wife is going to have it is that it will, she will also insist and say, my dear, don't do this thing. 
This thing will cause us problem. The man will say, I want to do it. See, my dear, please don't do it. A kind of subordinate of persistence that will make the man to direct to derive to, to, to drive back at to a right point. Now, which means that when God created a man for you, or he created a woman for you, there is a kind of attribute, there's a kind of a character, there's a kind of bloodline, there's a kind of my imagined child, there's a kind of destiny, there's a kind of purpose, there's a kind of unwritten, there's a kind of book that have been placed in two of you. Why? So that he can help you and she can help you. Otherwise, if you marry outside that person, you are going to have problem because who you are is actually in somebody else. Who you are going to be is actually in that brother. Who you are going to be as a woman is actually in that sister. As a, as a man is actually in that sister. So now, it, there is no way you can make it right until you marry the person God wants you to marry. And now, another thing is this. When we talk about marriage, marriage is like a key and a bad luck. A bad luck. I will look at when I can finish this one and look at it. Uh, marriage is like a key, uh, uh, the key and the padlock. You will know that if you, you don't bring original key to the padlock, the padlock will not open. Now, what does that mean? Until you bring the real key of the padlock, that is when the padlock will not open. What does that mean? That's why there, there are some Ari Aji that said, ah, uh, Filibo Shileko. And it took by the Kokoro Lulishi. The meaning of Filibo is that diet to be a diet person does not open door. You cannot open the door because you are a diet. You can only open the door because you have the key. That's the meaning of what that adage is. Now, when there is a door and there is a padlock, there's nothing you can do except you bring his own key. There are people that they call master key. Master key is only in the hands of God. Master key is being applied unto a man when the person has already had a wrong life. Maybe the person is supposed to marry has married somebody else. Then God will apply master key in sense of opening the person's destiny. Now, I'm coming to that. Now, the meaning of that key and the, and the padlock is this. I'm going to explain to you. The padlock is your destiny, who you are going to be. Before, every, before anyone is being sent on head, there is a handwritten destiny that is being attached to them. And the key will always be in the hand of the wife or the husband. Now, it's either the husband is the padlock and the wife is the key. Or the wife is the padlock and the husband is the key. Now, if the two of them did not come together, the, which means if the two of them did not across each other, there is no going to be an opening destiny. Two of them is going to find it very hard to fulfill destiny in life. Wherever, if the husband is in is in US and the wife is in Nigeria, and they are uh, maybe some, well, maybe they marry the friend differently, there is no way they can join in their life. They will never arrive the destination of fulfillment, never and never, except God intervene by using masaki. That is why some people, there are some brother or some sister, they will have the gift of prophet. They will have ministerial life. A kind of fasting life, a kind of powerful life. These things have shown to them that they are going to be in ministry. The husband they're supposed to marry is supposed to be a man of God, path man of God. But they end up marrying a rascal man. So now they will be seeing the gift will be manifesting, but the purpose of their destiny will not manifest because they have married a wrong vessel. And God cannot pour the grace on the wrong vessel, it's not possible. So now, the, that is why I said it is so wrong for a church to match make people. You have to pray for them to meet the person, the right vessel for them, the right chosen for them. Otherwise, it's going to be a problem. Is somebody hearing me now? It's going to be a problem. There is no way you can do it. If you didn't marry the person God appointed for you, you can't make it. You can't make it. There's no way you can do it if you don't marry the person God wants you to marry. You can't make it. Now, when we talk about God choosing for somebody, this one, that's why I laugh at people. Some people, God shows, God shows a hunchback man for them. A hunchback woman for them. 
but they refused it promptly. Say, how can I marry somebody with have an arch back? How can I marry somebody who is short and I'm too tall? How can I marry somebody who is too tall and too short? How can I marry somebody who is poor and I'm rich? And this is their own decision. They feel that God is unjust by giving them this decision. But let me tell you something. God will not by force you. If you refuse to marry that man, God will leave you alone. God will give that same man his own. God will appoint another person. There's, a, there's something we call substitutions. In everything God created, there's a substitutions. Satan thought that he is going to be the only choir in heaven. That's why he misbehaved. But Satan did not know that there's a substitution. Because God has not created man at that time. So he thought that it's going to be, God can, because of you, create somebody, can command somebody to go and pregnant. God can make somebody to pregnant, na, 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 na. and God will tell the man, wait, just give me 20 years. And the person will just make, maybe when he, he reached 40 years, 45 years, and the young girl is grown, or the, the brother reached 42 years, and the young girl is around 17 years, 18 years, and God will match, make the two of them, and we get married. Wait, what do you even call God? You cannot, let me tell you something, when God is making a decision, you cannot, God can, because of you, do something that you don't, what, God? What I'm trying to say is that, I don't want to go too far because of time, God has his own decision for everyone. And when God is telling you you're going to manage this, there's nothing you can do. No pastor, if your marriage is matchmaking, is not, an, is not approved by God. If your marriage is matchmaking, it's not approved by God. Matchmaking marriage is, is a satanic arrangement and uh, is satanic strategies. I'm going to tell you some secret of marriage by the grace, special grace of God. Let, let me quickly tell you the importance of marrying right, not matchmaking. That's why I'm saying all these things. Tomorrow we are going to talk in, I'm going to talk about the TV personality that make original marriage works. That's why many people have been in abused marriage. And they thought that marriage is approved by God. Let me tell you something. We are going to come to a stage where we talk about divorce, we talk about the marriage, we talk about this and thing. People did not understand the meaning of divorce. People did not understand the meaning of marriage. People did not understand the meaning of separation. People did not understand when your marriage is approved and when it's not approved. Now, it is approved marriage that they can they can say, ah, I want divorce, and God will say it is wrong. Now, if your marriage is not approved, I will tell you the meaning. If your marriage is approved, I will tell you the meaning. If your marriage is approved, it means the debt do you part. I'm going to explain this test to you by the grace of God. But one point I want to tell you is that there is a key that you have to meet. What happened to you if you do marry the person you're supposed to marry? What will happen to you? I will explain all those things to you by the grace of God. But for now, we have started it. Today, we just treat matchmaking marriage in the church. Those pastors who is matchmaking people, they will never make it to heaven. They should put down what I said today. They will never make it to heaven. May the Lord help you as you are watching me. God bless you. Tomorrow, by God's grace, we we'll continue our marriage. Talk, we are talking about over 250 errors in the church. We just talk about one now. May God bless you. Subscribe so that you can follow up with other, other 250, 250 errors in the church. So that you too can be a particular of the kingdom of God. People have made it to help, have make a lot of error, and they have missed it in heaven. The Lord personally told me, Jesus appeared to me and gave me this error in the church so that I can tell people. May God bless you. Shalom.